Hey y'all, good to see you guys again. Uh, so last time we looked at um, a brand new system of graphing called the polar system and we focused mainly on trying to figure out where points would be plotted and how to, how to read a polar coordinate. Um, we looked at how to find different coordinates that were in the same spot as a given coordinate and we also learned how to um, convert between polar and rectangular coordinates. But overall, we just mainly focused on individual coordinates, whereas today we're going to look at equations uh, that are in polar form. So we're going to do kind of the same thing where we will uh, look to see, first of all, how to convert from polar to rectangular and from rectangular to polar, which will be very similar to how we did um, the, uh, the, the coordinates, although there are a few little tricks here and there that I'm going to show you. Um, and then we'll also look at some simple uh, graphs of polar equations. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So to start this off, let's review the conversion equations that we used for converting polar coordinates to rectangular and vice versa. So if we're trying to go from polar form to rectangular form, we're going to use these two equations for x and y. And we might have to manipulate these a little bit when we're dealing with equations versus just coordinates. But the basic idea is if you know r and theta, or if they are clearly defined in your equation, we can hopefully rearrange the equation so that we can convert an r cosine theta to x. Similarly, we use this equation to compute y with r and theta. Now when we went from rectangular to polar form, we took advantage of these two equations. So the Pythagorean theorem, which relates x, y, and r, and the definition for tangent. So we've got basically three trig functions in the Pythagorean theorem, all helping us convert between rectangular and polar form. So let's start by converting some rectangular coordinates to polar form. I'm sorry, from polar form to rectangular form. I said that backwards. In other words, we're going to take advantage of mostly these equations over here, and you'll see how that kind of plays out. Now, when you are writing equations, typically, um, if it's in rectangular form, you try to write y as a function of x. In other words, you try to write something like y equals something something in terms of x. Um, that doesn't always work if, the, if y is not a function of x. For example, if you have like a vertical line or something like that, then you may have to write it as x equals. But in general, we want to try to write it as y equals. In polar form, we try to write the equations as r equals. So you'll see all four of these equations are r equals something in terms of theta generally speaking, but just like when we have a vertical line that has to be written as x equals, we may also have equations that there is no r, and in which case we have to write them as theta equals. But in, and no matter what the, the case is, um, we can use those conversion equations to hopefully get this to a point where we can write them as, uh, 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 as in rectangular form. A lot of times, um, it'll be the graph of these objects will be a lot more obvious in rectangular form just because you're more familiar with them. Um, but what you'll soon see is that there are some equations that are going to be easier to conceptualize in polar form. And, and I'll show you what I mean a little later down. So um, let's try to convert uh, these equations to rectangular form. Now, like I said, we want to try to take advantage of these equations up here. And so what we want to do is we want to try to manipulate these equations so that we can make simple substitutions. For example, um, in this equation over here, like I've got an R and I've got a sine. So it kind of looks like I want to use this, but in order to convert to Y, it needs to be R times sine theta. And so I don't have that immediately here, but what I can do is actually I can multiply both sides by sine theta. So in other words, I can do something like this. Uh, times sine theta, I'm just going to handwrite this. I know it'll be a little, little messy, but so times sine theta on both sides, uh, times sine theta. And what that will do is it will eliminate the sine theta from the right side and sort of basically just move it over to the left side. So we'll get something like r times 
sine theta. Let's get that theta going. There we go. R times side theta equals 2. All right, so if I multiply sine theta on both sides, I end up with this. And now I can directly utilize this conversion equation, right? Because y is equal to r sine theta. So if I have r sine theta right there, I can simply replace it with a y or substitute it with y because they are equal. And I get y equals 2. So this equation in rectangular form is y equals 2. And hopefully you have a decent idea of what that looks like on a graph y equals 2 is going to be a horizontal line. So if this is my graph, I'm just going to do a quick, real quick and dirty graph here. Uh, it's just going to be a horizontal line where y is 2. So just assuming that we've got that this is 2 right here, um, then your graph will look like this. So I just want to give you like a quick little glimpse into what the graph is going to look like for each one of these just so you can kind of start to get a, a feel for it. But right now, the main focus is just to convert from rectangular, I'm sorry, from polar to rectangular. Number two is set up very similarly, um, but we've got secant, right? And looking up here, I don't have any conversion equations that have to do with secant. So what we need to do first is we need to try to rewrite this in terms of either sine or cosine. And you may recall that Secant theta is the same thing as 1 over cosine theta. It's the reciprocal of cosine. So I can actually rewrite this equation as r equals 5 divided by cosine theta. And so now it kind of looks like what we had going over here, except instead of sine, we've got cosine. But we're still going to multiply cosine on both sides. Um, and then that will give us r times cosine theta equals 5. And now we've got the r cosine theta, which we know from up here is x. So we can just make a replacement and say that x equals 5. This is an example of an equation where we can't really solve for y here, uh, unfortunately, uh, because there is no y in the equation. So we're sort of stuck with an x equals equation. And that's because this is, you know, y is not a function of x here. What we have is a vertical line that passes through x equals 5. So let me just, you know, sketch out a little graph here. And this is just a real rough sketch. I'm not dealing with a grid or anything. I just want to kind of show you real quickly what it, what it would look like. We'd have a vertical line where x is 5. So I'm just going to assume that I'm drawing this in the right place. And in fact, I'm just going to label it as 5. So like right here is 5, just like over here was 2. So, um, so that's what this graph would look like, right? We've got horizontal lines, vertical lines. Now let's look at number three. This one is going to require a little bit more of a trick than what we did over here. Over here, we just tried to move things around so that we could use these first two equations to, um, uh, to, to convert. But here we have to be a, uh, a little more clever about what we're doing here. And that is, Really what we want to do here is when you have theta equals just an angle measure, um, the sort of trick to this kind of problem is that you want to take the tangent of both sides. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So the tangent of theta equals the tangent of 3 pi over 4. Let me throw in that pi there. And the reason why we want to do that is because we don't have an r anywhere in here. So we can't take advantage of either of these, any of the equations that have r, actually. So all three of these have an r. And so without that r, we're sort of stuck using this conversion equation. So if I take the tangent of both sides, I get this little statement. Now, tangent of 3 pi over 4, we can evaluate that using the unit circle. So let's pull up this little unit circle real quick. We see 3 pi over 4 is going to be um, over there. Uh, I, I don't think you can see my cursor. Uh, can I make the cursor go over there? Let's see. Uh, no, I'm having some, some, I'm kind of struggling getting the cursor in front of it. But basically, take a look and you see that at 3 pi over 4, the coordinate is negative root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. 
And so if I divide y over x, which is what tangent is, I'm gonna get negative one. So tangent of three pi over four is negative one. And um, I'm almost done here, right? Because I actually have a conversion for tangent of theta. Um, tangent of theta is just y over x. So I can rewrite this as y over x equals negative one. And then if I'm trying to solve for y here, I just multiply both sides by x and I get negative one x, which is really the same as negative x. So I get a linear function here. Uh, that's my equation. Um, this is just like a, the negated parent linear function. So what that would look like, if I'm gonna sketch that out, is just a, like a diagonal line going through three pi over four, which when you think about it, should make a whole lot of sense why the graph is looking like this. Because the original equation in polar form says that theta equals three pi over four. <clears throat> so what this line represents is all of the coordinates where theta is three pi over four. So like if I were to superimpose like a, a like let me just throw down a couple circles here just to kind of show you what I mean. Um, well, that's a pretty terrible circle. Uh, well, let me just at least, I'll just put one on there just to kind of make the point is like at this point right here, if it's in polar form would be uh, one comma three pi over four, and then you can have like two comma three pi over four and so forth. So this line represents all the coordinates where theta is three pi over four. Now, a lot of kids first reaction is, well, shouldn't it just be this ray like up here in the second quadrant? Because down here, three pi over four is not down here, but we can have negative R values. So like a point down here could be like, like this point right here, uh, where the circle, this first circle intersects the line, could be written as negative one comma three pi over four. So it still satisfies this equation when you have the negative r values, which is why the arrow does go in both directions and not just a single ray in the second quadrant. Now number four, here we go. This is where it gets a little trickier, um, but you're not gonna see too many that deviate from these kinds of equations, at least in this course. Um, we're gonna keep them pretty pretty simple for the most part. This is about as complicated as it's gonna get. And what you wanna do here is you wanna to try to rewrite secant as cosine, and I'll show you why in just a second. So you get r equals nine times tangent of theta, all divided by cosine of theta. So I basically just rewrote that reciprocal function so I can deal with cosine. And maybe you can, you're starting to see why I, I did that. Um, basically because I wanna multiply this cosine over here. And when I do that, I, I'll have this r cosine theta. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, hold up, get that unit circle out of here. What are you doing there? Get in my way. All right, let's take a brief look at this before I scroll back. So I, I rewrote this secant theta as one over cosine theta. And so again, the reason I did that is so what I'm, what I'm gonna ultimately do here is multiply the cosine theta to the left, and that's gonna give me this r cosine theta, which is what I want. And then on the right-hand side, um, I'm just gonna be left with nine tangent theta, and tangent theta is uh, a directly convertible, so to speak. Um, you don't have to have an r on there because you'll, it'll be y over x. So at that point, we'll be able to just do straight conversions um, and, and we'll be good to go. So. Let's go ahead and multiply the, car, the cosine theta to both sides, which give me r cosine theta equals nine tangent theta. Now, like I showed you up above, the r cosine theta uh, is, let me, let me pull this up a little bit. The r cosine theta is x. So this is gonna be x equals nine times y over x, which is what tangent theta equals. So uh, we're, we're almost there here, except what we wanna do is here solve for y. Um, so to do that, I need to divide by nine and multiply by x, okay? So divide by nine means I'm gonna have one ninth, and then x times x is gonna be x squared. So I divide it by nine and then multiply the x over. And so what I end up getting is a nice little quadratic here, 
which, you know, I'm not going to put any numbers on my scaling, but just to get an idea of what the graph looks like, um, hopefully you remember at least generally what a parabola looks like. And I'm just going to hand, hand draw this with a mouse so you know it's going to look good. Uh, psych. Well, actually, that, that's actually one of my better. Okay. All right. Oh, that's not, it still looks pretty terrible. But generally speaking, that's what it's going to look like. Okay, so these are four different examples of converting an equation that's in polar form to rectangular form. Uh, let's take a look at a couple where we're going from uh, rectangular to polar. All right, so we only have a couple here, um, and so we'll just do one at a time. This first one over here, x squared plus y squared equals 25. Um, if you look at the equations that we have to sort of choose from, this one's going to be super obvious what we want to do. Okay, x squared plus y squared is r squared. So if you ever see that, you can just do a conversion right away and just say, okay, well, that's going to be r squared equals 25. And then taking the square root, you would get r equals 5. Now, if this were an Algebra 1 class, you would say r equals plus or minus 5. But r equals 5 and r equals negative 5 actually are going to end up being the same graph. So it's okay to leave it like this. Um, in fact, what the graph of this is going to look like is something like this. So what you want to think about is like, okay, well, if r equals 5, um, what does that really mean? Well, that, that represents all of the coordinates where um, where, uh, where the r value is 5. So all of the points that are on that fifth circle, I'm trying to, you know, I'm doing these quick, so these aren't going to look like great circles, but basically something like this. Um, all of the coordinates where the r value is 5 is, I'll throw in one more on there, uh, uh, are going to satisfy this equation. So what this really is, and you might recognize this maybe from Algebra 2, is that this is actually the equation of a circle centered at the origin that has a radius of 5. And so it should be all of the coordinates that are al along that fifth circle. So I'm going to do my best here to kind of trace out that fifth circle. Uh, you know it's not going to look good, but something, something I'm going to try, try to squeeze this on there. Uh, there we go, something like that. So basically that red circle is the graph. It's just going to be a circle with a radius of 5. And so you just kind of trace along that fifth concentric circle. If it were, you know, negative 5, you would actually have the same exact circle because um, the only thing that would be different is, like, how it's traced out. Uh, what I mean by that is, like, you're dealing with all the negative r values. So, like, there would be a point, like, pi over 4, I'm sorry, negative 5 comma pi over 4, which would put you down here, but it's still going to trace out the exact same triangle. That's rect. Uh, wow. Let's get my shapes together here. Uh, it'll trace out the same circle. Um, okay, now number two, you probably already know what it's going to look like, um, you know, from a graph perspective. It's going to be a line that has a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of 2. So I'm not going to, like, put any numbers on here. But for the most part, it's going to do something like this, right, where the y-intercept is 4 and then the slope is 2. So this is just a really rough sketch of what that graph will look like. So we're curious, or I'm curious, to see what this will look like when we convert it to polar form. And in this case, what you want to do is you basically just want to do a direct substitution for both x and y. So we're going to use these two equations up here. x is our cosine theta, y is our sine theta. And the tricky part with this one is actually trying to isolate r. So let's go ahead and do those, make those replacements. So y is our sine theta, and x is our cosine theta. Everything else stays the same. And so we want to isolate r. Okay, there's two r's here. There's this one, and then there's this one. And so the trick here is to get both of these terms on the same side and then factor out r as a greatest common factor. So if I subtract 2r cosine theta from both sides, that's going to give me r sine theta minus 
two r cosine theta equals four. And then now that I've got both terms with the r's on the same side, I can factor that out as a GCF or a greatest common factor. And then, okay, so actually, you know what I'm gonna, uh, actually that's probably fine, just like, write it like that. Uh, equals four, oops. And then the last thing we need to do to isolate r is we're gonna just divide by this entire factor. So R's, R, r has already been factored out, so this whole thing in parentheses, we're gonna divide that on both sides, and then we'll get r equals four divided by this little expression. And that's it, okay? There's nothing more we could do to simplify it. So um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. So we get sine theta minus two cosine theta, and then this is what a linear equation looks like when the uh, y-intercept is not zero. We saw that if the y-intercept is zero, if this graph goes through the goes to the origin or the pole, then the equation will look a lot different. Okay, so for most linear functions, the polar form is going to look something like this, where you've got your y-intercept up here and your slope down here, like your m and your b if you're writing it in y equals mx plus b form. Um, but if it does go through the origin, it's actually a much simpler equation. It's gonna look like this, which is theta equals whatever the angle measure is. Okay, so there's a couple of examples of us going from rectangular to polar mode. Let's um, look at just a couple of simple graphs and then we'll be done for today. So um, there's really like four different categories of graphs that we're gonna look at. Uh, the first one is, what does the equation look like when you have a circle centered at the origin? So, like, um, if I have, let's do, do a little quick graph here. And so let's say I've got a circle centered at the origin, um, and the radius is, like, just some generic, like, A. Okay, so it could be any number, and it's not really going to affect how we write the equation. But let's just say that here's our graph, okay, it's centered at the origin, and we'll say that um, the radius here is A. So like, here's A, you know, A's up here, uh, you know, it could be five, it could be 20, it could be 1,000, but the radius from zero to the endpoint is A units. If that's the case, then our equation is gonna take the form R equals A, okay? And we saw an example like that earlier. Um, I think I think we did one up above where we had r equals five. So we saw it was a circle centered at the origin um, with a radius of five. If the line goes through the pole or the origin, and we, we also saw an example of this earlier too, is it will just be like theta equals something, okay? So let's say I've got like um, some some line that's gonna go through the origin, okay? Whatever this angle measure is in standard position, um, this one right here, okay? I'm gonna call that theta. Let's get a color that's a little easier to see here, okay? Oh gosh, my theta skills. All right, so we'll call that theta, whatever angle measure that is, and the way we're gonna write that equation is literally just theta equals whatever theta equals. Um, so uh, how do I wanna write this? So let's say, well, let's give this angle a different name maybe other than theta. Let's, let's call it, um, I guess we could call it A for angle. Uh, it's kinda lame, but okay, we'll go with it. So let's say that's A, so we have theta equals A. Okay, whatever that angle measure is, that's gonna be look like here. And we saw an example like that up here um, where we had our angle measure was three pi over four, so the line just goes through three pi over four. So those are two simple polar graphs. Um, the only other two that I really want you to be able to graph just by looking at the equation are the vertical lines and the horizontal lines. And we saw an example of each up here with the horizontal line and the vertical line. So. You know, in, a, in rectangular form, the uh, a vertical line would be something like x equals some number, and a horizontal line would be like y equals some number. 
All right, just like up here, I didn't really go through this, but uh, we'll, we'll take care of that later. But uh, the, uh, in polar form, this is going to be R equals either A times secant theta, or you might see it as R equals A divided by secant theta. I'm sorry, not secant, cosine theta. All right, so either one of these is going to be, is gonna look like a vertical line when you graph it out, where A is that, um, that, that a point on the x-axis where you're crossing. So let's do a quick little sketch here. If you get something like R equals two secant theta or R equals two divided by cosine theta, then you're gonna have a vertical line at that particular A value. Okay. A horizontal line will be very similar. Uh, we're either gonna have something like R equals A cosecant theta, or if it's written in terms of sine and cosine, the equation will look like R equals A divided by sine theta. And this will look like a um, horizontal line when you graph it out. So whatever that A value is, is gonna be the Y uh, intercept. You know, where does the graph cross the Y axis? So if this is my coordinate plane, we're gonna have a line that does something like this, right? Where that is at B, I'm sorry, A. I should start using different, different letters there. But basically that's the idea here. And so if, even if it's negative, it'll just be down here. So that's pretty much it for today. So to recap what we talked about today, uh, we looked at how to convert polar equations to rectangular form, we looked at how to convert rectangular equations to polar form, and we looked at some uh, sort of simple graphs that you could uh, construct, whether it's in polar form or rectangular form. Uh, next time, we'll dig a little deeper into these equations and, um, and, and maybe look at some more ones that are a little bit more complicated. We'll use the calculator to solve some application questions um, and, and do some other things. So until then, y'all have a great day, and I'll see you next time.